find in any, any language. And then the next verse, the mood changes. It goes, Putatma paramatma cha muktanam paramagatihi avyaya purusha sakshi kshetra gyokshara eva cha. Putatma means Lord Krishna is supremely pure. Now we're talking about his wonderful qualities, his personal qualities. Putatma. Puta means pure, spiritually pure, and purifying. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that, or actually Arjuna says to Krishna, that you are the supreme purifier. Uh, anyone who comes in touch with Lord Krishna becomes pure. Uh, because his influence is purifying automatically. So if we chant his holy name, if we worship him, if we offer things to him, uh, all those things that are in relationship with him become pure, become purified, because he is the purifier. Putatma. Um, there are two kinds of supreme purity. That by which one can purify oneself and by which one can purify others. So the Lord and also his great devotees have both of these qualities. They are not only supremely pure, but simply by their association, others become purified. And the next name is Paramatma. Paramatma means the greatest soul. He is the soul of the soul, the origin of all other souls. Huh? Not the material creator now, but the spiritual creator. He emanates all the other living entities, huh? as is stated in the uh, Svetashvatara Upanishad. Nityo nityanam, chetanash chetananam. Out of all eternals, he is the chief eternal. And out of all conscious beings, he's the chief conscious being. And muktanang paramagatihi. He is the destination or the objective of all the liberated souls. Muktanang. Uh, of the muktis or the liberated souls, you'll find them always in association with the Lord. You'll never find a, a liberated soul just drifting around somewhere alone. No, they're always in relationship with the Lord. This is really the message of Srimad Bhagavatam in a nutshell. Srimad Bhagavatam shows us, gives us a portrait of many, many liberated souls. And the characteristic that all of these liberated show, souls share in common is that they're in an ecstatic service relationship with the Lord. Uh, from the very beginning, the sages of Naimisharanya and Shukadeva Goswami and all of the different devotees that are portrayed, and there's hundreds of them portrayed in Srimad Bhagavatam. And the one thing they have in common is they're all in relationships with the Lord. And then the different kinds of relationships are the details. Uh, but the main message of Srimad Bhagavatam is you want to be a liberated soul? then you have to cultivate your relationship with the Lord. And Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality. You can reach any of the other personalities or realize any of the other personalities of Godhead through Him. That's why we chant Krishna's name. It's not that our conception of liberation or self-realization is limited to having a relationship with Krishna. One can have a relationship with any of His transcendental forms, but we can realize this uh, spiritual position more easily by worshiping Krishna because Krishna is the source of all those forms. Uh, all of the incarnations and forms of Godhead emanate from Krishna. So by worshiping Krishna, we worship all of them. And by realizing Krishna, we can cultivate or realize our relationship with any of his expansions. Avyaya means that he's eternal. Uh, vyaya means to uh, dissipate, uh, or actually uh, to fail, to fall down. 
Vyaya. So Avyaya means he who never falls down. If we worship Krishna, he will never go away. He will never cheat us. He will never um, abandon us. Or I mean, he's completely infallible. Uh, once we have a relationship with Krishna, that relationship is eternal. It's never disturbed. It can never be disturbed by anything. Uh, that's our eternal Lord. And because his worship is infallible, then uh, the, the mukti or the liberation we get from that relationship is also infallible. Purusha means the supreme person. It also means the supreme controller. And sakshi means the witness. Uh, so as the supreme controller, he's in control of everything. And because he is everywhere and within everything, he's also sakshi, or the witness of everything. Uh, so that we can't hide from the Lord. Sometimes people, they want to present one side of their personality or one side of themselves when they're in the temple or where, when they're in worshiping in the Lord. And then they want to have this other side that they kind of keep private, <laughs> you know? I've seen this many times. In the beginning of self-realization, we still have the urge to enjoy material sense gratification. So sometimes we'll be worshiping the Lord and we'll be on our best behavior, you know, we'll be really good. And then <laughs> after that, we'll go out and we'll do some nonsense. Do we think that he doesn't see this? I mean, this, this is not realistic. <laughs> he sees everything. He's in everything. He's in every atom. Huh? He's everywhere. So we might as well just be open and share every part of us with him. Because he has created us, each one of us, for a specific reason. There's a particular kind of service that he wants from each and one of us that only we can do. Huh? That's why everyone is unique. Everyone is unique because we are given specific qualities and talents by God to perform a particular service unto Him. And only we can do that service. And He's relying on us. He's waiting for us to come and render that service to Him. And if we keep it for ourselves and we don't offer it to Him, then we're being misers. You know, a miser is a person... Who, who keeps money and doesn't enjoy it. Huh? So similarly, a person who doesn't offer all of the different parts of themselves to God is being a miser because they're not offering the, the parts that are given to them by Krishna for his enjoyment. Huh? They're trying to keep it for their own enjoyment. But this enjoyment is leading them into temporary existence here in the material world and so many sufferings associated with that. So it's really not enjoyment at all. It's really just being miserly. Huh? There's no reason for it. He's everywhere and he knows everything anyway. So we might as well offer everything to him. Even those parts that we think uh, are not enjoyable by him. Well, why did he give us those qualities? Why did he uh, make us like that? Because he wanted to enjoy those qualities. So anyway, Kshetra Gyo means that he knows everything. Huh? He's everywhere. He sees everything. And Akshara. Akshara Evacha. Eva is uh, uh, like an emphasis. Like especially or even so. Huh? So uh, he is infallible because he knows everything. He sees everything. And he loves us unconditionally. Try to understand. He loves us eternally. Our relationship with him has no beginning or end. It's eternal in the spiritual world and in the material world. So wherever we are, in whatever condition we are, no matter who we are or what we are, we have a relationship with the Lord. And that relationship is one of unconditional love. He loves us. He made us the way we are. 
There's nothing wrong with any of us. Huh? It's just that we have, in our ignorance, engaged our qualities in the service of this material world, the material body, the material mind, material relationships, material identity. Huh? So this is our failure. He is infallible. He always remains steady in his spiritual love for us. But we're the ones who go away from him. Okay? Um, there's that old Christian story of walking along the beach with the Lord uh, and leaving footprints in the sand and all that. And then uh, the person says to the Lord, well, you know, there were those times when you abandoned me and I was just all alone. See, look back there at those footprints. Sometimes there's two sets of footprints and sometimes there's only one. And he says, yes, that's when I was carrying you.